question. So, yeah, so I guess like if there would be several of these, you know, wanting to feed on you, then you could potentially have quite a bit of blood. It would oh, be yes. taking a lot yeah, of blood, you, yeah? You could, you could have quite a bit of blood withdrawn, but probably it wouldn't be within a single night, but if you had a large infestation of dead bugs that you didn't treat and that you allowed them to feed on you every night, you know, over time, you know, you could, you, there are some, you know, effects that can result from that. You can, you know, you may be kind of a light sleeper, actually. I think a lot of people are <laughs> suffer, yeah. suffer from sleep, you know, sleep deprivation. Yeah. So they share the harvest, they're not like, this is mine. Back no, home. yeah, they're, they're very, you know, they're, they're willing to, you know, all feed on good right. All right. Yeah, I have a question regarding uh, the eggs. Yeah. Do you have any data on the temperature range at which these eggs survive? At, at which they survive? Or die, or what's the question? Yeah, yeah. What's the question? Uh, any data on the eggs and the range of you know where they're viable? Um, the eggs, the eggs. Uh, I I don't have any specific figures, but um, so I'd just be hazarding a guess. But they're gonna but they're gonna hatch anywhere between about 45 degrees, which is their minimum active temperature, okay. up over 85, which is you know where their optimal temperature is. So they may even hatch up over 90 degrees, since 85 is their optimal. Okay. So it, it's quite a wide range. It's not a very narrow range. And so the specifics might be a little bit different, but it's, it is quite a wide range, probably from around 45 to about 90. So do they lay these eggs in tires? Do they lay these in clusters? Yeah, they lay the eggs in clusters. Clusters, like uh, clusters of about 10. They don't lay like one here, one there. Uh, well, there's no real, real general. Generally, it's clusters. They still could lay you know, one over here and a few over here. But generally, they like to lay them in clusters. But if they're disturbed or something, they would move, then they would, you know, they would still lay them. They wouldn't necessarily go back to that other. So they don't have to land in clusters, even though that's a general. Any other questions? Yes. Do they glue them then? Yes, the eggs are sticky. So uh, they come out with a coating that's already sticky. So they, wherever they're dropped, they, they stick to that substrate. You're mentioning that they're sticky. You showed that example of them when, uh, on the luggage. Yeah. Does that happen to people? And then also, too, does it have, well, do they stick to the people in the house and right. then they walk around with them? And they're going to dry, you know, eventually. It's, it's not something that stays sticky. It's sticky when they're laid and they adhere to the substrate and then, and then that stickiness dries. Over so the scare stories that you read and, uh, and the journalists write and are maybe exaggerated. That they're sticking to people's bodies. And, and they walk into the lobby of the hotel and everybody in the hotel is infected. Oh, yeah, that's that's not very, yeah, that's not very likely. Well, I'm sorry, I can't hear what was the question and the answer. Whether people are walking around carrying eggs on their bodies. Just sort of all kind of water, things yeah. like that, yeah. Now, if you, have, if you have clothing, for example, I mean, if you, if you have clothing and it's in a drawer and the bed bugs are in the drawer and they lay eggs on the clothing and it's stuck to those fibers, then, you know, you take out your t-shirt and put it on and walk around and sure if you can. You know, it's, it's possible people can have bit bug eggs on their clothing, but it's not because you know it was laid on the clothing on the person, or because you know, you're wearing it around and you're brushing against something typically and pick it up that way. It's usually the eggs being deposited there by the female. Yeah, I've been reading that I, I, like children's schools. That yeah. they all hang up their coats in the same yeah. little books. That yeah. uh, you know, if the eggs are all in one, yes, the adhesive factor can you know yeah. exchange it to the next kid's clothing. Yeah. And, uh, when the bed bug finds a host, if it's maximum space, the travel time to travel is 10, 20 feet. He's just going to look for a crack in the bed. If it's wood or papers laying around the bed. But he's not going to go far then if he finds a host. Is that, is that a right assumption? And that they're going to find the first available host. Is and that they, they come out as soon as it gets dark, basically. So it, not as soon. Well, they typically come out in the middle of the night. Okay. So I mean, they're what they call negative, photo, negatively phototactic, which means when it's dark is when they're more likely to come out. But if you look at sort of the time frame, 
it's like almost any bell shaped curve. You're going to have some that come out early, but most of them are going to be coming out more toward the middle of the line. If you, if you put the lights on, does that prevent the head? a good question. It is a question. They're eventually going to come out either way. Okay. Yeah, when they get hungry, they'll come out. So it might help for a week or so, but, or a week or two, but when they get really hungry, <laughs> this is just out of pure curiosity. Where are the um, women, where does the little sticky larva come out of? Is it coming out of that little okay. cut in the side of them that we were talking about? The female? Yeah. Where did the eggs come out? Oh, right. she lays the eggs out of the tip of the abdomen. Oh. So That's on the female, okay. the, the eggs will be laid out of here. The ovaries are up in this area right. on both sides. And so the sperm is deposited here right. and goes into the ovaries directly, but then they lay the eggs, they still come out through the genital tract. Great questions. All right. Now, in terms of the bite, so they feed on you, uh, they, they inject some of these, chemi you know, these chemicals we've already talked about, or these substances, some of the proteins, that uh, then your body starts to react with those and creates a small reddish area immediately around the bite. This is what we call the immediate bite reaction. There's an initial response that occurs, and it's not pathognomonic, which means you can't tell a bed bug bite from a mosquito bite from a, you know, a spider bite. So it's very difficult for a dermatologist to say, oh, that's a bed bug bite, or that's a flea bite, or that's a... There are a few pathognomonic arthropod bites, um, something like chiggers. They have a pathognomonic bite because what happens is when they don't actually feed on blood, they secrete an enzyme into your skin tissue that breaks your skin tissue down into a liquid, and then they slurp that liquid skin tissue out. <laughs> and so, when, and then when, when you scratch them off, that liquid skin tissue hardens into a cap, but that enzyme is still inside, and so when you scratch the cap, then it oozes again, a clear liquid, and then it forms another cap. And then, so that chigger bites can be pathognomonic based on that oozing of that clear liquid. But a lot of other arthropod bites are generalized, and have a distinctiveness about them initially. Question or comment? You specifically mentioned that uh, dermatologists would have a hard time recognizing them. Does that mean that a general practitioner could easily miss them all together? And right. I think uh, at, at least go to a specialist that I've talked to about this. They, you know, they say generally it's an arthropod bite. Most of them will really say. Very few of them will say that's definitely a you know a bed bug. Unless there are a few things that you that you can tell, and this is what I'm saying. That's why it says not by themselves. Now, a dermatologist, or even someone who's not a dermatologist, may be able to identify bed bug bites by another feature, which is that they're often found in clusters or rows. And so, it's not the individual bite that's that looks anything different than one of these other types of arthropod bites. It's actually the way they're the way they're placed on the body. And so a dermatologist very well and very easily might be able to say it based on the pattern of bites and where they're at on the body because uh, bed bug bites are typically up on the arms, the limbs, arms and legs, perhaps on the shoulders, the face. Is that typical? Very rarely on the midsection in these areas of the groin because that's usually what's covered up when they're sleeping. Is that typical or exaggerated? This one or this one? Or both? The one closer on the to right. you or both? Uh, this is a, a little bit more of an extreme case, just to show the, the, okay. just to show that they have, you know, they, they come in lines of three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Not always three; it could be four. Could be, but typically, they they will bite and move, bite, move, bite. And so you get these lines that are more diagnostic of a bed bug bite rather than just a single bite itself. So the line is from a single bug. Yes. Okay. I thought I might get bit up so with the internet. Yeah. And it mentioned the three and it called it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> 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 Great. Oh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So here's, well, it depends on which way they go, I guess. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, one way or the other. And unless you're Taco Bell, right? You got a fourth meal. <laughs>